Hi, this is Ray from LoveyRV.com, and it's another sunny day here in the desert. We're visiting Palm Springs. Nice. So today I'm pretty stoked. I have a new project to tackle. I'm going to install a fantastic vent for my RV. Uh, this is the model 2250, and it's uh, got three speeds. Uh, also reversible airflow and it's controlled by a thermostat which is pretty cool we can set it at a certain temperature and it'll come on automatically so uh, let's get the box open and see what we got inside okay here we are all unboxed and we got uh, some mounting hardware and wiring and a new flange and here's the the beast. Um, this looks like my thermostat control. And down here we got the three speed control, the fuse, the forward and reverse button and off, and then I have the manual uh, lid on it. Let's look inside at the guts. Here we go. Ooh. So, <clears throat> now i got to install this puppy. First thing I'm going to have to do is uh, take out the old vent. I don't mean removing the sealant on the roof. Getting out the old vent and uh, cleaning up the old sealant and resealing it. And then I'm going to have to figure out where I'm going to get my 12 volts from. I do have a uh, light switch light fixture really close to this so I'm hoping I can tap into that. Oh, this looks like I guess when you bring the vent down it's got an automatic shut off. Okay. Okay so we're inside the RV in our living area and this is the vent that I'm going to tackle. So first I'm going to pull the screen off and this bezel cover around and I need to find some power for that fan, so I'm hoping that I can uh, get it from that nearby light fixture. So I'll pull down that bezel and have a look. There we go, the bezel's off. And I've pulled these wires out from the nearby fixture, so I'm going to have no problems there. I'm going to be able to grab 12 volts right, right beside it. So, next trick is to get on the roof and see about uh, pulling this old vent out. Okay, we're up on the roof, and I was a little worried about how this Dicor lap sealant that they used to seal it was going to come up, but it uh, seems to be doing quite well. I'm using uh, this handy little scraper I have, and the end is is not super sharp it's kind of dulled so I just have going around carefully and uh, making sure I don't cut into the the rubber roof so I'm gonna work my way around like I have been doing and try to slowly uh, peel that stuff off slow and steady wins the race I just want to make sure I don't cut into my rubber roof while I'm peeling this off but it's pretty uh, gummy we're in Palm Springs right now and we're getting about 80 degree sunshine weather so it's kind of like making the job a lot easier for me. So I'll continue on. Okay, so I got most of that uh, old die core sealant removed and all the screws. And the next step is I'm taking this nice little uh, scraper I have and it's kind of bent up a bit so I can kind of jam it under there and get right under kind of give it a little bit just being very careful not to to damage the rubber roof at all so like I said just slow and steady trying to work that free without cutting into the roof it's going pretty good this stuff is uh, really almost like chewing gum right now so it's a good time of day to do it just about there 
There we go. Oh, yeah. There, old vent out. Woohoo! Now I just got to go around and kind of clean up all this stuff as good as I can. Next step. Who's in there? Hey, Beagle! <laughs> okay, there's the new fan ready to go in the hole. I'll give you this kind of foam gasket to put in between. And uh, I'm going to leave most of this die core. There's no reason really to get too picky pulling it all apart. And risk wrecking the roof, so. It will also help seal the, the screw holes. So I'll just place that into the hole. There we are, looking good. So I'm just going to put a, put a couple screws in for now until I check what's going on below. Um, I decided it came with some uh, this uh, plastic kind of foam material in between. And I thought I'd go with that because they're probably using that maybe to dampen the vibration of the fan. So uh, I'm going to that. I'll go down below and uh, hook up the electric before I get too much into sealing it up or anything. So to hook up the electric, you just need the 12 volt wires. So we've got uh, black and white coming out of the fan. And black in the instructions is 12 volt positive and white is 12 volt negative. So with my uh, multimeter, I determined which of these uh, wires, 12 volt wires in my Cougar are plus and negative. The one with the red line turns out to be the 12 volt positive so I'm putting black to it and white to the other one. Let's just check things out before I start sewing things up. Oh yeah. yeah. Must have it wired right. Okay so um, I'm gonna actually solder those joints and tape them up. I got one of these uh, triggered soldering guns and some solder. I find that makes a really nice connection on the wiring. So I'll go do that. So I got the wiring all soldered up and taped up and uh, tucked inside the attic and the last thing to do is to install the, the little bezel back in. They, they give you a, a plastic one that will fit perfectly for the fan. Just four screws. And voila! There we have it. A nice cool fan. It's really quiet on low setting. I don't know what this camera will pick up, but uh, it's it's quite quiet. One thing uh, when I wired it with my trailer is the lights are also wired to a switch when we come in. So uh, it's kind of nice that it uh, also has a, a switch on the wall over here. When we come in, it's wired to the same as the ceiling light, so this switch will now turn us, turn it on and off. And I can always switch the, the lights on if I want them on. We don't use this one too much. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that install. That's the Fantastic Fan Model 2250. So my final step will be to get up there on the roof and uh, finish putting all the screws in and uh, then uh, apply the sealant. Um, they're looking it's going to be a, a stretch of about a week of sunny weather here so I just might leave it for now and just make sure give it a break in period so before I seal it right up. And I also have some of that Eternabon sealant tape on the way. I ordered that I'm going to be doing some work on the roof so I'd like to use that to seal her in place. So stay tuned for that. So I'm back up on the roof and uh, we've tried out the vent fan for a few days and it's worked great. So now I'm going to do the final seal on it. Um, I've gone around to all the screws and just kind of like snug them down. I don't want to tighten them too much because this is a plastic frame so I don't want that cracking. And what I'm going to use to seal it 
is this stuff called Eternabond tape, which is really good for sealing up the roof, especially rubber roofs. And then after that, I'm going to use some Dicor lap sealant around the seams, so I think that's going to make a really nice seal for my vent fan. I also picked up a couple things to prep the surface. I got some uh, Eterna Prime for uh, priming it before I put the tape on, and Eterna Clean. And that's for cleaning up all around the rubber roof, making sure there's no oxide or debris. So the, those two items will make the tape stick really well. So I'll get on that. So there we go. Not too bad. A little uneven on the ends, but no one's going to see it up here. At least I didn't have any major screw-ups putting it down. It went down pretty easy. That's kind of a peel. A plastic backing you take off, so I just took a little half at a time. And then you want to apply pressure to it. The pressure uh, activates the sealant on it so it sticks down really good. They actually advised to use a little roller, um, pressure roller. I didn't have one so I just used a socket that I had to smooth things out. One thing I didn't do after I read, read the instructions on this Eterna Prime said not for use on PVCs so I wasn't sure what kind of plastic that's used but it sure looks like a P. PVC to me, so I decided not to use that just in case. So there we are. Now I'm just going to run along the seams with some Dicor lap sealant around the outside and inside just to be extra sure it's sealed and and the wind won't won't catch it or anything. So I'll do that next. Whew! It's getting hot up here on the roof, but I'm done. So I. Uh, Went across all the seams with some uh, Dicor self-leveling lap sealant and it actually came out pretty good, if I do say so myself, because I usually suck at that kind of stuff. Can't do caulking worth of beans. Okay, I had some leftover Dicor, so I went up to my TV antenna and gave it a good coating. So now, I'm... Uh, getting pretty good with that stuff. I'm going to go and redo all the other vents and also want to go and do some of the seams on the back and on the outside slide so stay tuned for that. Okay Angelina are you ready to test out our new fan? Oh, this would be good for cooling dogs down. Okay Let's have a look at it here. Turn it on. So that's the low speed. And the thermostat here, if you turn it up to the warm setting, turns off, turns on. Cool. So that's speed number one. It's not too bad. You don't really notice it too much in the rig. Cranks up a bit more on speed number two. So we'll go one more to. Okay, that's cruising along pretty good. So, what you're supposed to do is open up, close down all the windows and seal all the other vents, and then it'll create a uh, breeze through. You open up a window or two on the cool side of the RV, and uh, you get a nice airflow and it cool, cools down the RV. Let's go check the airflow coming into the window. Ah, there we go. Sitting in my chair, working on my computer, and I got a nice stiff breeze coming in. You can see it. Ah, that's nice. So, yeah, it's a good upgrade to the RV. I'm really happy with that. So, until next time, this is Ray from loveyourrv.com. Happy RVing.